Today we are going to be reviewing this super telephoto zoom lens made by Canon. The Canon 100-400mm f4.5-5.6L to L IS Mark II USM lens. And I'm going to start right now. What is up guys, Photo Fever here and welcome back to another lens review. And today we are reviewing this lens here, the Canon 100-400mm. Now this is the second generation lens. The previous generation or the shotgun lens a lot of people ended up referring it to was a push-pull 100-400mm. Now this lens did not have the best image quality and it had quite bad image stabilization. So is this lens worth the upgrade or if you've got a brand new mirrorless camera, is the 100 to 500 mil worth upgrading to? Let's find out in this lens review. So the first thing I wanna talk about guys is the overall build quality and the design of this lens. And in my opinion, this is a massive upgrade over the previous generation, the shotgun lens. That you had to kind of pull in and pull out, all depending on what focal length you want. Where this one, like most classic lenses today, is a twist lens. So all you've got, you've got the lens here, and then if you wanna make it longer, you just simply twist the zoom ring here, and then you twist it out again. It is nice and easy to use. And I must say, it is a lot better than the previous generation. And this is actually how the 100 to 500 mil works anyway. So if we actually have a look at the lens, it has all of the features that you'd expect. It's got image stabilization. It's got a focus window here. You've got a full-time manual focus ring, which can be found just underneath the zoom ring. And then in between those two rings, instead of having a locking switch, you've got this Titan Smooth feature, which is another ring here. So if you slide it all the way over to the uh, Smooth setting, if you go ahead and zoom in and zoom out, it makes it a little bit easier. Where if you go ahead and slide it over to the Tough setting, or if you call it here the Tight setting, it makes it a little bit tighter, so you need a little bit more pressure to move it in and out. And this is just designed to stop creeping once you've got your lens hood attached. Then obviously you've got your zoom ring here, and then you've got a bunch of buttons here on the side closest towards you. So you've got a focus limiter switch at the top. You can switch it from full to three meters to infinity, all depending on what you're focusing on. Then obviously you've got your autofocus to manual focus switch, so you can switch that off and on like so. Then that's exactly the same for your image stabilization. So here you've got off and on. And then lastly, you've actually got three independent image stabilization modes. Mode one is just for general use. Mode two is if you're vertically panning, so you're panning up and you're panning down. Then mode three is if you're horizontally panning, so if you're panning from left to right. Predominantly, I had it on mode three and mode one. I very rarely ever used mode two, but I must say the image stabilization was really good. And then lastly, you've got a removable lens collar, but you actually remove the bottom section of the lens collar, not the ring around it. And that's just due to the actual design of the lens. But overall, I thought the actual design and actual build quality of lens was absolutely top notch and exactly what you'd expect from an L series Canon lens. So I'm gonna be giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10 for build quality. So next I want to have a look at the image quality of this lens. How well does it fare up versus the Mark I version or the brand new RF 100 to 500 mil? Well, there's only one way of testing this and we're gonna go and take some sample images. Now today I went to Old Warden. Now this is a great spot because it is a plane museum. So there's lots of planes and aeronautical activities going on, which is perfect for this lens. So let's go and have a look at a few sample images. So to test this lens out, I went ahead to Old Warden, which is an old plane and aeronautical museum in Bedfordshire, which boasts having the oldest British flying plane in the world, all the way from 1909. So this is a great place for testing a super telephoto zoom lens. Now I took a little bit of video, but I also took some photos. And I must say, I was really impressed with the quality. If you're after a lens for aeronautical or anything sport related, I think this lens is going to be perfect, boasting four stops of image stabilization, but also the versatility from 100 to 400 millimeters. So overall, I was really impressed by the quality of the photos, and I would highly recommend visiting Old Warden because it has a great amount of history all the way from World War I. So let's go and have a look a little bit more scientifically at some graph images. So the first photo here is shot at 100 millimeters at f4.5, wide open for this lens. 
Now, if you go ahead and zoom in, you can see this lens is pin, pin sharp, wide open at f4.5. Now, if you go and have a look at the corners, they're a little bit softer, but I would stay, still say they're very sharp. Now, if we step down to f5.6, you'll notice it gets a lot sharper and a little bit brighter. So this lens clearly suffers from some vignetting here. Then if we go ahead and step down to f8, you'll notice that the corners become pin sharp, as sharp as the center at f4.5. And if you go back to the center, you can see that has got even sharper. This is by far one of the sharpest lenses I have ever tested, especially when you think about it's a super telephoto zoom lens. So now let's go ahead and zoom in to 400 millimeters. Now the new aperture at this range is f5.6. So if we go ahead and zoom into the center, wide open at f5.6, the sharpness is still there. And I must say this lens is very sharp. And if we go ahead and zoom into the corners, you can see that the sharpness is lacking a little bit, but it isn't too far behind the center. Now, if we go ahead and step down to f8, again, this is where this lens really is sharp. I did notice I was getting the sharpest images from most of the photos today are around f8. And then if we go a step down to f11, you'll notice that the images do start to get a little bit soft just due to diffraction here. So overall, I think this lens scored really high when it comes to sharpness. So let's now go and have a look at distortion and vignetting. So if you go and have a look at this image here, so this image was shot at 100 millimeters at f4.5. And you can see there is a small amount of distortion, uh, barrel distortion, but very minor at f4.5 with a small amount of vignetting. But that vignetting can get pushed all the way to the corners at f5.6. And then if we go ahead and step down to f8, that vignetting completely disappears. Now, if we go ahead and zoom into 400 millimeters, that barrel distortion flips into mild pincushion distortion. And as you can see, that vignetting is a lot worse at 400 millimeters, even though the aperture is narrower at f5.6. Now you can reduce that vignetting if you step down to f8, and then if you step down to f11, completely remove it, but you will find that distortion remains through its entire focal length. You'll find around 250 millimeters, that's where this particular lens has no distortion. But anything beyond that, you'll have pincushion, and anything before that, you'll have barrel distortion. But overall, very good lens for image quality. So overall, I thought this lens was absolutely perfect when it comes to image quality. There are very few issues with this lens. The only downside I would really say is the aperture. Now I've recently tested a 400 mm f4, which has a half a stop brighter than this lens. And it is a really, really good lens. The only downside is horrendously expensive and very large. So this is a great comparison if you're after a, a lens that's a little bit more versatile, but also smaller and lighter as well. But I would say the image quality is absolutely top notch. Not as good as the RF 100 to 500 mil, I would say that. Uh, I have got my in-depth review, but I'll make sure to leave the link in the description, but it is a lot better than the previous generation Mark I version. So overall, I'm gonna be giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10 for image quality. So the next thing I wanna have an in-depth look at is the size and weight of this lens. Now, by all means, this isn't a small lens. If you wanna compare it to the 16 mil f2.8, a lens I've only just recently tested, that lens comes in at just over 160 grams. This lens here is way, way larger, and it's gonna take up considerably more room in your camera bag. But that's just due to the very complex optical formula and the four times magnification than this lens offers, obviously 100 to 400 mil. This lens here comes in at 1,640 grams, which is heavier than the Mark I version. The Mark I version only comes in at 1,380 grams. So it is a little bit heavier than the Mark I version but I wouldn't say it takes up any more room in your camera bag. In fact, this is around about the same size as the Canon EF 70 to 200 mil f 2.8. These are roughly the same size and weight and will take up roughly the same amount of room in your camera bag. Although I would say this is ever so slightly wider, although it is barely noticeable. So let's go ahead and compare it to two other lenses. So if we're gonna have a look at the brand new Canon RF 100 to 500 mil, a, a noticeable upgrade with this lens, although it does offer 500 mil instead of 400, that lens comes in at 1,530 grams. So it's a little bit lighter, but I think that's just due to the build quality. This is a lot more metal, where that 100 to 500 mil, it's got a little bit more premium plastic. 
And then lastly is the Sigma 100 to 400 mil. Now this has a smaller aperture at 400 millimeters, just f6.3 versus f5.6. So this is a stop brighter than this lens. That lens only comes in at 1,160 grams. So if you're after a smaller lens, the Sigma lens might be better off. But I would say the image quality and the aperture is definitely better. And with an overall filter thread of just 77 millimeters, overall this lens isn't too large. Definitely is larger than a lot of other lenses on the market, but it isn't as big as I was expecting. So overall, I'm gonna be giving it a six out of 10 for size and weight. So the next thing I wanna have a look at is what this lens is like for using it for video, but also have a look at the focus motor and image stabilization. Now this lens is actually really good for video. Firstly, it has boasts up to four stops of image stabilization, which is really good for a super telephoto zoom lens just like this, but it's also got a really quick and very precise focus motor. Now what I really like about this lens is the customization of the image stabilization. It has three independent modes. Mode one is just for general use. So if you're not panning left, right, up, down, or side to side. If you're panning horizontally, so let's say up and down, then I would have it in mode two. And then mode three, which is the mode I predominantly used it for, is when you're panning left to right. And when I was at Old Warden, obviously planes travel from left to right or right to left. So having it on mode three had the best image stabilization when I was using it either for photography, but also for video. I also thought the focus motor was really quick as well. Coupled with the EOS R5, which is what I use for all the video and photography tests today, I also thought that the actual accuracy of the focus motor was really, really good. You often find that sometimes super telephoto lenses can miss by a considerable amount, but I didn't find that with this lens. And that's something that the old Mark Lens one offered. It offered, it wasn't as sharp when it was in focus, but it did struggle to get in focus just due to the kind of complicated autofocus mechanism it had. So overall, this is a massive upgrade. And I would say it was as good as the RF 100 to 500 mil when it came to the actual focus motor, but nowhere near as good as the 100 to 500 mil when it comes to image stabilization, just due to the hybrid image stabilization that it boasts with the Canon R5 or R6. So overall, I'm gonna be giving it again the full mark because I really like this lens for video, the 10 out of 10 for focus motor and image stabilization. And lastly, but most importantly, is the price. How well is this lens price versus the other lenses on the market? Well, let's start off with this lens here. The Canon 100 to 400 mil Mark II comes in a whopping 2,000 279 pounds. Now this is a very expensive lens, but because it's been out for a while, you probably can get some secondhand versions. But if you had a look at the Mark I version, you can't buy this brand new anymore. So you've only got used options available and they are dramatically lower just due to the, this lens not being as good as this lens here. And it's obviously a previous generation. You can find Mark I versions from anywhere from 500 to a thousand pounds. I found a really good one, uh, a nine condition one on Wex Photo Video's used site for just 747 pounds. But obviously this is used and it doesn't come with the warranty that you get if you bought a brand new one. Now, if you had a look at the Canon RF 100 to 500 mil, their brand new RF lens. Again, do you remember this is an EF lens, not an RF one, but obviously if you do have an RF camera, you can convert it. Uh, that particular lens comes in a whopping 2,979 pounds really expensive and by far the most expensive on my list today. But if you want to save yourself a little bit of money, Sigma do an offering, a Sigma 100 to 400 mil. Yes, it doesn't have as bright aperture as this lens, but I wouldn't say it is a terrible lens, which I have previously tested. And that lens comes in at 699 pounds. So this is by far not, not the most expensive lens on my lift, but it is still over 2000 pounds, which really does limit the amount of photographers that will be able to use it. If you're after a more budget friendly option, the Sigma lens is absolutely perfect. Or if you're lucky, you can try and find a second hand one for a between 1200 to 1600 pounds all depending on condition. So overall, I think this lens is fairly expensive, but not by far the most expensive on my list today. So I'm gonna be giving it a five out of 10 for price. So now I want to have a look at the pros and cons and should you have this lens in your camera bag. So let's start off with the pros of this lens. 
To start off, this lens has great build quality. A full metal construction and weather sealing, this lens is great if you're planning on taking it in the great outdoors. This lens is also pin sharp and one of the best super telephoto lenses on the market. This lens also boasts up to four stops of image stabilization, which is really good at getting pin sharp images, especially at lower shutter speeds. It's also great if you want to introduce motion blur, especially if you've got tracking subjects. This lens has also got a very fast and very precise autofocus system, thanks to the USM focus motor that Canon have boasted. This lens is also cheaper than the RF equivalent, so if you want to save yourself some money and you've got an RF camera, this is definitely an other option versus the very expensive RF 100-500mm. So now let's go and have a look at the cons of this lens and why you shouldn't have it in your camera bag. This lens is a heavy lens, the heaviest on my list today. Obviously you can get heavier lenses, but the RF 100 to 500 mil is lighter than this lens here. I also would say this lens isn't as good as the RF lens. It isn't as sharp, although it's very close, and the image stabilization is nowhere near as good. If you're after better image stabilization, the Canon RF 100 to 500 mil is a lot better. And also this lens is very expensive. The Sigma lens is only 700 pounds, where this is over 2000. So if you're after a cheaper lens, the Sigma lens is definitely the one for you. So there is my lens review of the Canon EF 100 to 400 mil F 4.5 to 5.6. I must say it was a blast to use and I really recommend this lens if you're a wildlife or maybe if you're an events photographer. I thought this lens was absolutely amazing. But what are your thoughts? Make sure to write it down in the comments. And if this video was helpful or if you found it informative, make sure to give it a like. But also guys, if you want to learn more about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, Start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you guys don't miss anything. Now, if you want to follow my latest Photoshop tutorial, I've got my latest playlist just up here. Or if you want to have a look at the Canon RF 100 to 500 mil review, because I've only reviewed that very recently, I've got that video just down here. But until next time, guys, keep creating. <laughs>